Zen and Tech podcast. Um, today's topic is um, set and setting. And um, my name is Joel. I'm from um, Lightbath Limited. We make and manufacture the, the Lightbath Light. And just um, jumping pitch right now is Gabriel from Infinite One. Um, Infinite One and uh, Lightbath. Um, it's a collaboration. Uh, we made that, that podcast together. And um, the podcast is all about um, technology and combination with holistic practices. And um, last episode, we um, had a little bit of closer look in what the libel light is and what the libel light does and what the, um, the effects are, what people report, and uh, the type of um, experience you can get. It's very nice to see that in comparison to the last, last episode, we have already a lot more people actually listening uh, to the podcast. It's very exciting. So hello, everyone uh, just joined. And um, yeah, I just give um, Gabrielle a moment to say hello to everyone as well. Hi, Gabrielle. Hi, Joe. Thanks for uh, having me here. And um, sorry if I'm late. I, I hope I'm not. Yeah, not at all. You know that all, all good. Hey, that's perfect. And um, let's get started because I know we got a lot to cover today. And yeah. um, without further ado, we should um, kickstart our um, second episode. Um, so when we talk about set and setting, in your opinion, what's the first thing uh, that comes to your mind? I think we no. should first establish where um, the, the term set and setting. I just um, told my partner that the, uh, today's episode is about set and setting and he not really had a relation uh, what that actually is or what that actually means. So um, set and setting is a term from um, the, the, the world of psychedelics and it um, refers to basically your surrounding and your environment you're in uh, during the time when you have your you know, psychedelic experience. And a positive set and setting can um, bring your psychedelic experience into a, a positive direction as well. Um, set and setting includes um, your room, your space you're in, but it also in includes all the different senses we um, have in, in that environment, sight, smell, hearing, touch, taste, all these things contribute to the experience. And um, I think today's um, episode, we just divided into exact, exactly these different um, senses. Um, we just go from sense to sense and talk about what, um, what, what, what it is from our perspective. We always speak from our perspective. We don't want to teach anyone um, how to do something. We just communicate how we do our own life practice and meditation practice and so on. Exactly. And Joe, uh, it's very important to talk about these because it can make a difference between uh, successful and very inspiring and all giving awe, you know, a type of session or something that uh, you didn't really um, got to, to experience all the way you, you could have. Yeah. So when, you, when you're talking about um, sight and about visuals, about the visual elements of the set and setting, uh, what are you referring to exactly? So, so I think the first point is um, the room and the environment we're in. So, uh, um, uh, sorry, I... Um, I think I lost the connection there. No worries. So I think the first thing uh, in terms of sight, what well, um, jumps into uh, my mind is the room and the environment we're in. Um, in terms of um, the light experience, you can make your light experience either inside in your own space, so it can be um, outside uh, on the fresh air. And really depending where you are, um, that really alters the the actual light experience itself. So for example, when we have a, an event somewhere in London, 
um, the Tara Yoga studio, for example, where we, where, we, where we have that beautiful LED light, but the whole room looks really spaceship-like. So that gives a complete different feel um, when you enter that room and if you um, enter that space of light and going that um, experience. Compared when you do it outside, for example, in the woods or somewhere in the fields where you are surrounded by nature and you have the, 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 the smell of nature, the sound of nature. So I think that's, yeah. that's, uh, that's one important part of um, sight. But um, I think in terms, when we ch just stick to the room itself, um, the, there's, a, there's the, the factor of light. If you have um, dim lights, um, you have indirect lights, you have um, candle lights, all these different types of light within the room can change the whole feeling when you, when you are in that room and enter that um, beautiful experience. That's, that's the first thing that jumps in my mind. Is there anything else you, you, you think uh, um, in terms of space um, room is important? Yeah, I mean, it's all, it all comes down to preferences. I know some people who cannot stand the dark, uh, like pitch black, and yeah. they would also like to have uh, some atmosphere spirit light like something for the mood to set in and um, that's perfectly fine you can adjust the light and sound experience uh, accordingly by increasing the intensity of the light if the environmental um, light is very uh, yeah, intense yeah. I, guess. I think it's just important that the the, the room light is um, on uh, a little bit on the darker side um, as you said, it doesn't have to be pitch black, um, but um, then better the contrast between the, 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 the brightest light, the, the, the light emits, yeah. and when yeah. basically the light is completely dark, when that contrast is the biggest, then you have, of course, the best experience with, with the light experience itself. So the flicker effect is the best when it's complete bright and complete dark. But as you said, you don't have to see in a pitch black black room so it can be just a, a, a little bit of a, a dim surrounding so if you do it outside and it has to have to be of course really be in the early early morning or really towards the evening into the night and if you do it in a the room then you can adjust the room light a little bit better but yeah of course um, um, the, 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 the room doesn't have to be pitch black yes and also when you're talking about lights i'm also thinking about light preferences and for me there's also um i always prefer warm lights uh, the ones that are going more towards the golden spectrum of the colors instead of you know blue so i think yeah. warm lights naturally red and um, orange tones in light automatically make you more calm and um, towards the evening, it just um, kicks in this arcadian rhythm where you just get um, a little bit tired, and so that's why it's important that, that you, you you light in your home that you towards the night always go warmer and warmer to the point where it's really a dim dark light, so that you get naturally more tired instead of just before uh, until you just uh, going to bed. You have your whole house completely white and bright. Um, on the other hand, um, doesn't mean that a, a good room for, 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 for light practice has to be always red and yellow. It can be also a, a bluish tone. But I would suggest more to people who have maybe a, a, more, a morning routine with, with the light, um, use a little bit more colder um, light homes to actually um, activate their body and their mind instead of really calming it down but um, I think also um, color changing lights can be uh, can make a very interesting environment so these RGB colors are very interesting to make quite psychedelic um, rooms and surroundings Gabriel, you still here? Hmm. Yeah, I'm still okay. here. Um, 
sorry, I, let me change connections. Um, no worries. Then I'll just go ahead. And so, I think with the, with the RGB lights, um, especially interested in when you, when, you, when you have the fading colors going on, and you can fade from warmer tones to colder tones and do that with a few independent lights. I think the, 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 the effect you get in a room can be A, quite modern, but you can also change the mood within the room very quick. So if you have a room you, you designate to your um, holistic practices or your spiritual practice, and you have it lit with an RGB light, you, you can kind of change the room color depending when you do your, your practice within the day. And yeah, I think exactly. it's very beneficial when you do something in the morning that you have a more a colder tone um, as an environment light and if you do things in the evening you have more warmer tone that, that's interesting that's an interesting point i mean and all these are all things you can do in your home right of course. you can buy um, changing colored bulbs and you can get um like curtains to do a pitch black session maybe yeah yeah and also outside, I mean, it's really depending in what which environment you are. So when you are somewhere on the beach and you have maybe the the, 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 the the sound of the sea and the birds, and that's a that's a complete different environment compared to the to the woods where you maybe hear the the, the woodpecker going and some winds going through the through the trees. So that that is a complete different relationship to your surrounding, and yeah. Um, it's 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 sometimes a little bit difficult to time and have weather and time and everything um, perfect that you that you not are too cold outside, but the light is not too bright and um, the weather is nice as well. So it's sometimes a bit difficult to find the correct moment to grab your light light and go outside and enjoy the light outside, but. Um, yeah, really depending where you are where you are in, in this world, but it's it's nature is always a good um, environment to enjoy um, these sorts of, of journeys and um, yeah, just go with the environment on onto a light journey. I think is something very very powerful. Yeah, I bet it is. I mean, uh, it's time I do it outside I have a different kind of experience and it's uh, I should do it more often to be honest I um, most of the times I do it indoors uh, in, yeah in an event setting or yeah. even on my own so um, but when when we're talking about uh, senses besides uh, sight there's also a smell or touch let's talk a bit about that let's talk about a bit a bit about aromatherapy, maybe um, we can uh, mention a bit about incense or I don't know other types of stuff like that. Yeah, yeah I think I think scent is a very powerful world, and we connect a lot of emotions and experiences with different smells and um, scents and. And we, we can incorporate that into our space and in that, into our practice. And um, it's, it's the, the, um, a multitude of different um, things we can choose from. So uh, in terms of incense, uh, I found usually the, the, the incense more from the Thailand area a lot more pleasant because I have a little bit of more spicy um, dry smell to them compared to the um, Indian incense which are very punchy and um, have a very strong aroma um, so to speak. It almost reminds me a little bit on a curry. It's, it, it has just so many smells come together it can be a little bit overwhelming. So I usually prefer in terms of the classic incense stick usually more the 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 the, 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 the the one from Thailand region, but there are not only these sticks around. So the, the um, woods um, you can burn, like um, 
it's Palo Santo. So, it's, yeah, it's called Palo Santo, the sacred wood. Yeah. <laughs> and supposedly they only collect the falling off pieces. It's never uh, chopped down. It's never cut to to be processed. It's just uh, they they collect the dead wood basically. And yeah. what I found about Palo Santo is that you can actually um, even vaporize it to have a have the best efficiency of that scent. So if okay. you hold your your piece of wood at a kind of a yeah a bit of a distance from the flame, it will produce in a matter of seconds the best smell it can give instead of burning it you know touching it with the flame i suggest um only heating it and that would release all of those aromas in it and you know palo santo is something that you need to experience for yourself because it's really such an original and <laughs> unique smell especially palo santo's smell it immediately calms me down as soon as I smell it it's just it just brings the whole mood and all the energies it just brings them all down and it, it, it it's just so calming and it has a very warm gentle um smell to it and uh, that's something i really appreciate with uh, palo santo and even if you're not really into all these incense um incense smells or if you think it's a little bit overpowering palo santo has something very subtle and it just gets absorbed by the by, by the environment and it's just a really nice air cleansing agent so to speak yeah and supposedly it keeps mosquitoes at bay oh, so, really? yeah supposedly and it also purifies the air spiritually and it's used in uh in those cultures for uh thousands of years so yeah. yeah a lot of a lot of people use also the, the sage don't know if you ever seen that that you have a bundle of sage and then it's usually wrapped in a in a piece of thread and then you get a kind of a a lump of sage and um, if you burn that it, it has also a very very aroma um, strong aroma in the, um, in, in the air and it it also cleans the air and the energies but compared to Palo Santo, you have a much stronger smell. And some people are reacting a bit more sensitive to these type of smells, can react a little bit more sensitive to the, to the sage. I personally really like it. But you do? The sage, yeah. You don't? I, um, I prefer Palo Santo. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I think it's not too bad. But I like the, the the sage usually better if it's um, in a, in a in a outdoor environment or if you use it in a tent or something like that, where it's really mixed with a lot of fresh air. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Then then it really works. Also, um, a lot of um, resins um, used for 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 smoke rituals and so on. Um, they usually work better if you have them mixed with fresh air compared in 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 a in a in a, in a indoor space so when um last year we went to wales and had the the the, the, the retreat the Linden land retreat tree burned these these um special herbs and resins and combined with uh, with the wood fire and combined with the fresh air that gave such a a powerful um smell to it or if you would do it just inside in your living room, it could be a little bit overwhelming, I think. Yeah. Awesome. So, you know, segueing into this, I want to touch a bit on... Um, so, of course, we've mentioned, um, you know, scent infusers and stuff like that you can put into water and spray into the air. Um, so everybody knows essential oils, right? Yeah. What about um, what about the importance of refreshing your air, basically, like opening a window? How is that playing? That's key. I think a lot of people just live for too long uh, throughout the day just in stale air. 
and um, unless you have really a, a house built for ventilation and natural cleaning air, like a, a, a minergy house or something like that, then you, you're kind of forced to just on a regular basis to open um, the windows and just give yourself a little bit fresh air. Uh, also, would highly suggest before you actually make your your light practice that you just open the windows and let fresh air into that room. You're actually going to make your practice if if, if there is a meditation practice or whatever. But um, being in a room with fresh air is is, is already ten times better than if if you sit the whole day in the same stale air. Yeah, and this is something that's only a, a superstition or something of that sort. You can actually measure the quality of your air. So what I have here is a device that does just that. It tells you how much CO2 you have in your room. So what that means is you know scientifically, like measured, when to crack a, a window open. And that's really important because this it's not uh, calibrated at the moment. Now turn it uh, silent. But it showed me that I should actually ventilate. And you can do that by opening a window and the door or two windows or only cracking up a bit the window. Oxygen needs to fill your uh, room so you can breathe properly and have all your functions um, going well for you. Yeah, so um, that's a very simple, probably quite a, a low cost device you, you can buy. I don't assume that's a very it's expensive. Not, no, it's not. Yeah. It's, very, it's very simple. You can buy like anywhere a couple of uh, hundred or a hundred bucks, and that's it. Yeah, you for a hundred bucks, I mean, and it also has, has a battery. You may say that your air purifier already has a display that tells you uh, your air quality, but it, that doesn't really count. So imagine this, your air purifier does all the jobs and it uh, purifies your air of dust, right? Um, CO2 is not affected, by the way, you still need to open your window. So everybody who thought that if, if you have a purifier, an air purifier at home, you don't need to open your windows, that's wrong. You need, you need to open your windows because oxygen needs to get inside. That, it's simple as that. Nobody has an oxygen generator at home. Only a spaceman has that. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so you can measure it independently with one of these bad boys. It's very cheap, very easy to use. You turn it on, turn it off, and it also can uh, alarm you, it, it can tell you if there's a gas leak. So depending on what functions you get, you can also find out if you have a gas leak inside. And that's really, um, yeah, that's really powerful because you don't, it's nothing that you can uh, um, sense before it's too late, most of the times, unfortunately. And because you can measure your air, you can also purify it. Um, I'm just going to mention it. There are a few ways. So, of course, the classical air purifiers with HEPA filters, we all, we all know them. They uh, look a little bit like this one, although it's not this one, but they do a, look a little bit like this one, and you have to change the filters. Uh, nobody does that, and nobody thinks <laughs> what's the um, repercussion of that. I, I'm here to tell you that uh, secondary pollution. So instead of catching dust, your purifier might spew out a few, a few <laughs> more particles than you think. So we have um, a few versions. This one you can put mount inside your car. Um, I'm just here to mention them. And this one you can even um, catch all the the particles. It has a low energy active uh, field so um all the air or the all the dust catches on to these um, types of, of system it's, it's really advanced maybe we'll talk a bit about it in the future i think it's unique on the market there's no other costs for it um, so it's something on the long term 
So would you say that um, when you when you have an air purifier like that, could, could that contribute to your sacred space in terms of just removing uh, bad particles out of the air and just um, refresh the, the air in a sense that, the, of course, you have to open the window and get some fresh air in, but the, the, the air purifier itself could just take over and remove certain particles um, flying around in the air and have a dust yeah, reduction in, yeah. that, in that space as well. Because what happens is you open a window and pollution comes in sometimes if you live in a polluted area. And those, those particles can be tackled with an air purifier. Yeah. Oxygen needs to be replenished by opening a window. So it's a constant... Uh, it's not the, it's not really um, that deep. It's really simple. Well, and, yeah, yeah, um, it's quite an interesting thought that you basically, before you start your your session, that you open your windows, clear, uh, cleanse the air, clean the air out, and then after that, just turn the air purifier on for a few hours and just have the 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 the, 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 the um, filter air. So then you have high oxygen in your room and also um, filtered air so all the the potential particles in the air you brought in from outside uh, to the inside especially now when we have um, beginning spring and all the pollen is flying around and some people reacting a little bit more sensitive to that you can also filter that one out so if you if you have maybe a uh, um, certain breath breath work exercises you want to do you, you do it in the in the best possible air, um, and, and definitely contribute to good air quality within within the room. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that's um, very interesting. Uh, I I I have that for you know that for quite a few years now. It, it's nothing new, but I, I quite like it in terms of um, oil diffusing. So it's but it's that thing where you just fill up with water and then you add some some oils and with a, with an ultrasonic um, system it disperses water and then it comes out at the top and um, I, I really like that thing because um, compared to the to the candles it's a very safe way to to, to use um, these, these 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 oils Terrible oils in, in, in your space without have to burn any candles and exactly. increase the, the fire because, risk in the space. Because, exactly because uh, a candle flame would burn your oxygen and give you more CO2 and would contribute to a, 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 yeah, a lower quality air. But uh, in the same time, what you're using, it actually um, uh, it, it increases the humidity in the air, which lowers your uh, air fine particles, your fine particles in the air. So that's also kind of an air purifier, which, yeah, cleans the air of dust. Okay. So you don't breathe the thing. Yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah. So the, the little water particles bind to the, to the, the, to the dust particles. And it's, yeah, that's, it's, a, it's an interesting point. Yeah, I've never thought about that. Yeah. The, the only disadvantage on uh, on that particular device is, I think, the noise. So if you, if you really do uh, a spiritual practice where you need some silence around you, that always has a little bit that watery um, and humming sound going on. So I, I, I personally think sometimes that's a little bit annoying. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of... Um, quality and in terms of um, say the the, the 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 fragrance it generates from the etherical oils. I think it's definitely um, something of the best things you can use compared to candles with um, the water and so on the tea light ones. Yeah. So what what you need to take away from this is crack crack open a window if your um, area is totally polluted you can do something about your quality of the air but anything that contributes to uh, you relaxing even more into the session will bring a higher quality of your time spent there so before, before, we, move on, before we move on to the next point 
I just want to add something to the smile as well. And it's um, that we um, connect emotions and um, memories with, with smiles. And you can, in, in aromatherapy, you, you can really target certain smells with certain emotions. And it's very interesting, um, a few years ago, uh, quite a, um, a difficult thing happened in my family and um, my mom was wearing um, during that time a certain scent on her with um, sandalwood and and I kind of connected that smell with the um, with that thing that happened in our family so nowadays when I smell exactly these tones or these these these, these uh, fragrances, I kind of get uh, sent back to that difficult time my family had, and but that also works with positive things. So when you, for example, smell I don't know molten chocolate or uh, a certain type of food or something like that, you immediately get um, trans transferred back into that in, into that happening and you can really utilize that me that mechanics in your spiritual practice or in, in, in your light practice when you yeah. do, um, when you have a certain relationship to a certain fragrance or a certain smell and you use that in your in your light experience you can induce dreams or imagery um, connected with that with that smell so it's a very powerful tool um, to use when you when you do your life practice. Just want to add that to the to the to the smell thing as well. Yeah, and for anyone, it's going to be different. For me, it was Palo Santo. For someone else, it may be eucalyptus or lavender. Or, yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. So whatever gets you started on your journey, you need. Yeah. Uh, you don't need you, you. You actually should enhance, or you, you may enhance, or yeah, you can. You can do all this stuff that can actually help you immensely without even um, thinking about it too much. Mm. So, moving on to touch, we we can say a, a lot of stuff here, but we are talking about uh, stuff that will help you relax more or help you um, get rid of any physical discomfort so when we touch when we when we talk about touch uh, we immediately can think about massages or um, practices that help you relax um, I'm always into more of a deep tissue work chiropractic guy I always go for that but I know that some uh, go for um, more subtle stuff uh, what's your take on that Joel? so in, in terms of people approaching me and uh, asking if they can combine the light with their practices uh, I think I hear often Reiki uh, just um, classic massage I think Reiki is a very interesting field with with, uh, with, uh, with these um, energy redirections. It's a very subtle but very powerful practice, and I think it could be greatly, greatly um, supported with, with with the light. And um, I know um, someone who has a, a massage practice and has a light for light as well, and um, she 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 reported back to me that uh, it's it's a very powerful tool when you when you work with people who struggle to get in that um in that headspace of a massage relaxing in order to have the maximum from uh, a massage it's it's really down to relaxation and let go and and just let let, let yourself fall into that experience and some people just struggle to switch that head space. They just turn the head off and just let go. And um, she 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 told me that when 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 she used that light and uh, the, the light light before the 
and massage itself that these people are just a lot more relaxed and open to that uh, massage um, therapy. Uh, um, also, it can be utilized for um, an, an aftercare that you have maybe that more intense deep tissue massage, but um, use the light more in a in a in a in a in a, in a lighter way um, after the massage. Just relax and um, give the body some time to actually absorb the impact it just had. Um, yeah, I, I think I think that there's a lot of things it could be implemented, but at the end of the day. Uh, every massage therapist or any practitioner working in that field has to kind of find their own way how to do it. I'm not a professional massage therapist or I don't have a really experience in in that form of practice. So the only thing I can say for myself is experiencing it in my own body and combining it with the light and the feedback I get from other people. But also... Touch can be something very simple, and uh, if someone goes on to a psychedelic journey, or if someone goes on to the light journey, and on, uh, alone, someone just holding your hand, or just have a, a warm hand um, on your belly, uh, and feeling that the energy is already so powerful and beautiful, it doesn't need always to be a full massage or a full. Um, Reiki treatment it can be something very simple. So if you have a, a friend or if you have a, a, a family member and you show them the light for the first time and allow that person to experience the light for the first time, that person might be a little bit tense, might be a little bit afraid of what they actually experience. And comforting that, that person with just a light touch without stroking or anything like that. Just lay your hand on someone else's body during that time can be a very, very helpful and powerful um, type of treatment without any experience in massage or Reiki at all. That's yeah, just intention, just good intention and uh, trying to help you out, right? Um, I guess I guess uh, we can also mention that you can. Um, another thing is that you can also hold something, or uh, or in yeah, in, you can put a, a, a blanket on you that you really like the texture of. Anything that can add to your relaxation, right? Absolutely. For example, yeah, I think I think yeah. there's not really a wrong or right material. Uh, at the end of the day, it's the material you like. Some some people really love the feeling of a, a knitted sweater. And that gives them really that warm comfort. If I'm wearing a knitted sweater, I'm all the time itchy. So it's definitely not the, 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 the thing I, for me. But if I'm doing my own light practices, I'm using really heavy cotton blanket and that that really gives me that natural feeling and that feeling I feel comfortable with. Some people lie on a on a sheepskin or on a sheep's fur and experience the warmth of that. Other people uh, maybe use a certain type of cushion. But it's also interesting you say holding something because sometimes, uh, or for some people, it's really hard to stay focused throughout the whole experience. They kind of need something in their hand, otherwise they get lost. And um, earlier today, we had, a, we had a quick call and you mentioned something I, I really found very nice. Uh, you want to you wanna say it again? Yeah, so sometimes when I go on to my light journeys, especially with the Liba, I um, tend to keep this with me and hold it in my hand. Sometimes I run my uh, fingers across the the writing on the edge because it's um, carved in 3D, or is it, uh, what was it again, Joel? It's the, 3D it's, printed. So, so what you hold in your hand, um, you have to say that, that's a, that's a light yeah. travel coin. So people coming to the experience, to the light experience, um, they at the end of the of the event, I usually hand out um, the, 
these light traveler coins and this kind of a certificate for everyone that they had uh, a light bulb light experience and also on the back is a um, is a discount code so if someone decides to purchase a light they can they usually claim back the cost of the event course but the, the coin itself is a, it's a UV printed coin, so it has a very 3D textured print around the, 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 the edge of the, of the front. And in the center, it's a very shiny uh, metal surface, so it, it almost feels a little bit cool. I never really thought that that could be used by someone in their, in their live practice. And as you told me today, that uh, you occasionally just hold the coin and feel the textures of it during the light experience. I found that a very an interesting fact, and then, but I never thought about that people actually doing that. But yeah, yeah. It, but it can be other things as well. So the, the, for example, these um, shiny um, balls you can have in your hand, so you can have um, a, a fidget toy, just something that just occupies your fingers a little bit and just focuses your mind onto that on that object you have in your hand. I wouldn't suggest that you have a very complex thing in your hand. You don't want to be distracted, but um, having a shape in your hand you feel comfortable with can be something very com comforting and helpful in, in that journey um, and helps you to keep the mind where, where it should be. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so subtle things like this, you don't need, like we mentioned, a deep tissue massage. I, for me, it's Yumeiho. I always go for Yumeiho that combines the tissue with a lot of uh, uh, chiropractitian, I, uh, joint manipulation. Whatever gets me into that physical um, discomfort, no, none of physical discomfort state. So. Um, but it can be also not... be something like a, a, a pine cone, or it can be a, a, just a, a, um, a paddle or something like that. Yeah. It can be just a very yeah. natural thing you hold in your hand, and you just get that, that feedback of, of that object. Might yeah. be that with the paddle you enjoy the weight of it, maybe the, 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 the rough or very smooth shape. It can be yeah. also a crystal where you feel the, the, the different edges, and um, maybe you, you, you find um the energy is flowing with these objects very beneficial to to your practice and that's basically the main thing what it's all about when you speak about touch and becoming you know, get, getting into a relationship with objects you're holding in your hands during the during the your spiritual practice yeah, yeah i mean anything that gets your imagination going i yeah. guess and gets you into that flow state maybe and you may we mentioned Reiki, we mentioned the uh, holding stuff in your hand, um, other subtle stuff like that um, might be, um, you might um, find relief, like pain relief, that can, can actually help you with your light journey by using red light. So a device like this one uh, for, start, for starters might be good for you. So it's a light bulb. You put it near the area that you are experiencing experiencing pain in. So may that be your neck or maybe your um, knee, and you hold it for ten minutes. And quite to be honest, in the first seconds you really feel the heat, um, and it's it's it really does um, its job you get a lot of pain relief out of it. Um, I mean, not a lot, but it's enough to, to, to yeah, to say that it, it's worth it. Because sometimes you cannot get the pain out of your sciatica, and I use this for that. Yeah. So I find it very, um, very... These things, useful. the combination makes it, I think. And um, it's, if, if you just rely on that one thing, it, it's a very very narrow band you actually said when you have a, 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 a full spectrum of different things you introduce in your space without making it too complicated or too too much you can also start combining these things so going back to the smell so you can 
introduce smell um, and um, incense you like um, you can you can play with the light that you have a, a gentle light and then if you also introduce some um, red light therapy but I found the other day something very interesting I think everyone's seen it in my own Instagram but there's um, I think it's called a, a Shakti mat have you ever heard of them yeah the those spiky yeah. mats, right? Yeah, kind of spiky mats. I never tried it, um, but I'm really interested to, 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 to feel the effect from it. And yeah. um, I, I just in, always intrigued if I see things like that. And uh, it, it's, it's for people who've never seen it, it's, got, it's, a, it's a mat, and you have, I think it's made from plastic. It has some sp um, slight spiky rings across the whole blanket. And you're supposed to lay on it or, or have it in your neck. There are also some sets where you have a combination between a cushion and that, that, that mat. And then you just basically lie on it. And it should increase the, the blood flow in your body and direct energies um, or, say, distribute energies through, throughout your body. I never try it, so again, but I'm really intrigued to try it. Have you ever yeah. tried it? I haven't tried it. I want to. Uh, again, I, I, I can only imagine how it feels like because I've used something uh, not really similar but in that area of uh, application. Okay. So this is a back support. It's adjustable. You use it like so. And it also, it's also spiky. So this model, you can find the, uh, various models. This one is spiky. Um, this one is not. I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm tall as fuck. And I need, uh, I need support for my back. Usually I use this once a week. So I crack my lower back using this. And then I, um, yeah, I go on with my day without any pain. So uh, if I have, if I, if I am experiencing a bit of tension in my lower back, I use one of those in combination with the light session because I don't have, the patience to just sit on it. Nobody has the patience to. So, in the same time, you also do another type of therapy. I, yeah, I am always about combining uh, stuff like that and efficientizing the time. Um, yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, I think we can. Uh, move on to more the, the taste side of things and um, in terms of taste the first thing jumps in my mind is food and um, yeah I think uh, it's, 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 it's always uh, interesting to hear what people eat and drink before the, the delight experience um, what, 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 what is your personal favorite or how you handle food and drink when you before you go into a light experience so before um, a light experience i don't eat a lot i uh, if i eat i eat uh, light um only fresh vegetables maybe or a light meal um but i can see how if your favorite food maybe mcdonald's and you haven't had mcdonald's you might but I don't know. I feel like shit after eating McDonald's, yeah. so I don't recommend <laughs> it. Um, I feel great before I go, and then after I went, oh no, why? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. but in comparison to um, consuming all the psychedelics like uh, mushrooms, or um, you usually always go with an empty stomach, and I think. With the, a big difference there with the light or with with, with with light treatment in general is that you not go with a stuffed stomach into the experience. You eat something that you feel comfortable but not heavy. That, that's that's usually my suggestion I, I I give to people. Yeah, yeah. So I would suggest when you eat something that you eat. Um, that now oh, rice, maybe with some chicken or tofu, uh, just a, a general light meals with flavors you, you feel activated and makes you happy and healthy to a certain yeah, extent. If you're, if you're 
you're full of food and you're lying under the light, you might actually be taken out of that experience because of yeah. that, because you're not too warm. Because, yeah, because you're feeling something physical. I always uh, tend to lie under uh, the lights and have my experience when I don't have any discomfort. Be, may that be if I'm hungry, if I'm very hungry, I might want to take, uh, so, uh, yeah, to take care of that first. Yeah. Again, if I need to go to the bathroom, I might want to take care of that first. I don't want to receive a phone call while I'm having my life experience. I want to be relaxed and not have any worries or needs to be taken care of. So I think um, when we talk about foods and how you can augment your, your journey, so yeah, keep, keep a healthy diet, but also keep away from alcohol. That yeah. does not tend to relax. Or no, I, I, think, I think that there's the lots of substances who work really well together with the, with the light. But alcohol, or what people reported, because I generally don't drink any alcohol, but what people report back to me when they drunk some alcohol and use the lights um, are usually not very positive experiences so a lot of people report back a little bit more uh, a spiky a little bit more an aggressive light experience um people report back that they feel a little bit nauseous um that they um feel disoriented during the the, the light experience so in general alcohol and the light experience really doesn't go well together uh, no, in general, alcohol is shit. I mean, the origin of that word is, uh, yeah, you, you should find it out. You yeah, it's, search it's, the book it's, because it's, uh, I think it's like the death of soul or something. Yeah. something. I'll go. Alcohol, That's how yeah. it feels, at least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I never was a big drinker, but, and uh, I generally don't drink any alcohol at all. Yeah, maybe. But, yeah. If, uh, if, if I have the like events. To... Uh, if I have the events and um, I usually write people an email in advance to make them aware of that they should drink beforehand and yeah I think yeah. I think you change something in your body in a way which just doesn't go well together with, with the light and I, I'm not because... a scientist on how alcohol acts in your body, or I don't I don't know anything about that. It's just what I know is people are even just slightly drunk or have a very small amount of alcohol, and they go under the light. They usually don't have a great time. I, I haven't personally. I haven't uh, tried the lights after I uh, drank alcohol, but each time I drink, I can see that it's not. Uh, really helping towards what I'm trying to uh, describe as a conscious uh, living. So if you live consciously, you you can also enjoy your foods even better. Isn't that right? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. 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 So alcohol takes a bit of that away. So leave alcohol aside. Let's talk a bit about uh, conscious um, eating, for example. Yeah, I think that's a that's a really great point when you have um if you have a meal on the evening you go uh, you have your light practice and um conscious eating is really um something you can nurture your soul with food and during eating you really ask uh, ask yourself and become aware of what you actually take to yourself and you absorb all the, the, the sensations from mouthfeel, warmth, um, texture, and anything what you, what you experience during eating. And also you become really aware of what, what food actually is doing for you. you that you, that you um, give yourself power and energy and that you, that you, that you give, allow your body to, to transform that food into something else into uh, and nurture your soul with food and um, if you eat, eat a meal and um, after, have planned afterwards making a light experience or a light session I think um, conscious eating can be a great way 
to introduce that practice and introduce yourself into that headspace and just basically sit down and turn off any television or TV shows or YouTube and just eat quietly your food and consciously consume the food and don't overeat, absorb your body, how it feels to absorb that food. And um, that can be a really great gateway into the experience you have afterwards. Um, that's, that, that's my personal experience with um, conscious eating. Um, I mean, uh, that's my experience as well with that. And while we're on it, let's talk a little bit about tea. Because I used, to, just like aromatherapy, I used to discredit tea. Such a uh, ignorant, uh, yeah. yeah, guy. I, was. I think so, tea is amazing. I think yeah. that you have a tea allows you to make very easy and um, an, an, a ritual about something, and um, you can go really, really into details with tea ceremonies from the you know, Japanese tea ceremonies where the, the whole preparation of tea and consuming tea becomes a whole evening experience. Um, but even if you just keep it simple and, and you, you prepare for yourself a tea, the act of making tea and consuming tea can be already so uh, a beautiful ritual around, around that and can be a great preparation and framework for, for, for your spiritual practice you have afterwards if you like. I think all these things we've uh, been talking about is all about basically building yourself that framework that you, you, you that yourself feel comfortable and relaxed before you enter into uh, into the the, 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 the the light experience itself. And tea first of all you, you have all these different flavors available of tea. Um, but it's not only that, it also goes back to touch when you hold the warm cup, when you have the sensation of a warm cup in your hand as something very calming and very uh, gives you a very secure feeling. Um, if, if you combine that maybe with cold weather or something like that, it also can be memories you come up with that. So I'm not, I, I don't think it's all about what tea you drink. It can be can be simple English breakfast tea if you, if you, if you like, but at the end of the day, if you if you just make a, a ritual around making your tea for your space, and when you enter your space, you 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 you, you consume that tea also in a very conscious manner. It it just brings your thoughts and your your mind to yeah. to that central point. Yeah, exactly. For me, for me, tea, just the act of making it and uh, drinking it slowly or, yeah, um, enjoying it, it's um, a bit of, I use it to get out of that work headspace. Yes, yeah. that's, yeah. Just, it, it's really just that transition work. period from a very busy head into that calm and more soul-driven space. So that you have to kind of build that transition and having a, a, a form of tea ceremony, if that is just making or boiling the water and pouring into the cup, smelling on the tea and start drinking, it's a very simple way to do it, but you can extend that to a much bigger thing like a Japanese tea ceremony. But in general, just the act of making the tea and being exposed to that Sensation, yeah, and sensation is already an awful for many. Yeah, yeah, right. On. And I also have a few clients that uh, also like to smoke a little bit with that tea. Um, you know, like vape a little bit of uh, CBD, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So I think CBD is a very interesting um, thing. Uh, there's a lot of misunderstanding with um, CBD out there uh, because CBD became a very fashionable thing. So we found, found it in, meanwhile, in almost pff, loads of different products. And I think CBD in your mascara or lipstick 
is just uh, barely usable at all, but it, it, it sells it really well. And often CBD products have an, have an CBD extract. So they use the hemp flowers and reduce the hemp flowers chemically to just the CBD and you end up with a white powder. And that white powder is mixed into drinks, and, um, for example, gummy bears or other foods. The, the hemp flower in general already contains so many beneficial um, terpenes and um, uh, contents who, who calms you down and have a really a holistic purpose. But if you just boil it down to the CBD, in my eyes, you lose a lot of um, beneficial parts of the plant. So um, if consuming CBD is something interests you, I personally consume always the whole CBD flower. It's a hemp so flower. The yeah. It's the hemp flower. Um, it almost looks like normal cannabis, but it's just from, from the hemp plant. It has a very small amount of THC. It's usually 0.17%, so it's nearly nothing. But um, I usually put it into my vaporizer. Um, there are lots of different vaporizing devices out there. You can buy a really expensive one. You can buy a lot of cheap ones. There are also quality differences there. But in general, yes, when I wave the wave flower, you have the, the full experience of, of the actual hemp flower. And it helps me a lot in, in, in my light practice. And if you, if you need that transition period from that busy head into the calm um, spiritual world. Yeah, in, in all my research, I found that you can also put in that um, dry herb vaporizer. You can put in lavender, you can put in eucalyptus leaves, maybe um, hops, uh, um, sage, uh, uh, lemon balm, you name it. I mean, there's tons of stuff you can use so you can relax a bit more into that uh, experience. It's, it's very and interesting with lots of these plants, they have the same terpenes. So if you smoke or um, vaporize, for example, hemp flower, you're going to consume very much the same terpenes like you have in lavender. And um, so the, oh. the terpenes are usually the same or very similar, but you find them in in loads of different plants and um, for example if you look for a more um, don't know uh, something who opens your your, 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 your breath and your, your, your chest area and you vaporize um, eucalyptus that can be a, a very powerful plant to consume I think so it doesn't need to be CBD or hemp or cannabis or whatever um, there are loads of different plants you can consume that way and uh, yeah. um, I, I think if you, start, if you start making your research in that direction, you, you, you find you kind of your, your suitable, um, your suitable um, plant or the, the thing who aids your, your practice. Yeah, you can also um, look up a bit more about uh, stuff like rape or other types of um, snuff uh, herbs that are um, used uh, by tribes for many thousands of years and are known to have a lot of beneficial properties. So we are going to mention in further uh, or later episodes uh, these uh, types of uh, enhancements, but we thought of uh, not going too much into it now, but just mentioning them now. So when we talk uh, about um, visual part, the smell part. We also talked about the taste part. I think there's also one that remains, and that's the acoustic part, yeah. right? The hearing. Yeah. Hearing. I think the hearing is one of the, the biggest parts to actually change how we perceive the light. And I can, I think I repeat myself again and again, but I have often people contacting me and asking, yeah, does the light by light um, change with the music or does the music kind of 
change the light of the, of the light alignment. Always explain the same thing. It's not connected at all. So you can listen to every music you want, but depending on what music you listen to, the whole experience changes. And it almost feels like the light is in sync with the music without being in sync at all. So it has something to do with the, with the, with the, with the brain waves who listen to music and also absorb the, the, the light frequencies who automatically go in sync and maybe where the mind starts finding patterns as well um, in, in, in musical rhythms and finds connections to the light rhythmic as well. But it's, it's absolutely bizarre that you can have a device playing on a certain frequency and you listen to, to music and what you absorb visually is, is so complete in sync with the music without being technically in sync. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And also, um, if, you, if you work with sound healing devices like the, 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 the crystal singing bowls, they have a certain frequency. And um, if I work with James um, in, 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 in um, Halifax, he plays the singing bowls and I have the lights going on with the, with the, with, with the client. And we always combine the Schumann frequencies with the, the 435 megahertz singing bowls. And they seem to be really resonating with it uh, together. It's sometimes very interesting when he plays the singing bowls, they almost have a, a binaural um, beat effect. And together with the light, it almost seems like that the bowls actually change the lights uh, or it, it kind of um, acts as a remote, so to speak, but just because they're very similar frequencies. But yeah, if you listen to the no side trance during the light experience, it gives you a completely different light experience. It can be very psychedelic. It can be very visual. It can be very fast. Yeah. Um, com compared to, for example, white noise, where you just enter a, 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 an empty space and just end a, 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 a void, so to speak. And it's, I think music is such a powerful medium to work, especially with the, with the, with the lights together. Yeah, I mean, you said it, it's amazing. When you have your live going into sort of a synchronization with the sounds that you are playing with your favorite tracks it's it's something extraordinary i thought uh, i thought it through many times and i think it has something to do with uh, the the tendency of systems to synchronize in our universe we may talk a bit about this on our later episodes but it's very interesting so it's not the theory, it's, it's, uh, it was demonstrated if you, yeah, they did a lot of tests. And long story short, the pendulums are going to sync up if you put them in the same room. A uh, pregnant woman may have uh, sync, um, they may sync up their menstrual cycle. And all sorts of weird stuff are happening on this planet Earth. So, yeah, I mean, it's... It, uh, it shocks me that Liba is capable, or not capable, but it, it shocks me the, the effect that it gives with your own music. Liba is going to carry you through your um, desire. Yeah, but, it, it, it kind yeah. of goes in that, in, that, in that sync without being in sync at all. It's just you, yeah. you, your perception of the light. And I think that's, that's a, it's a very important thing we what you learn Let, when you yeah. use the light on a regular basis, it's all about the perception and not really what the what the, the light is reproducing. So you can kind of use the same program on the light and the experience is always different depending on the day, depending on the time, depending on your mood. And um and, and yeah, on music your music is a right? is a is an incredible tool to guide you through through these spaces but it's not always not necessarily always music it can be also just um absorbed
absorbing the sounds in your space and um, sometimes it's also just very beneficial just to listen to just your surrounding and just observe how, what, what, what is actually going on around me without actually judging it and without actually questioning what, what, you, what you absorb. But when you're in, in nature and you lie down, I think it's not the best thing to listen to music in that, in that sense. If you listen, listen to, to nature and listen to the birds and maybe to the wind and the sensations connected with these sounds and combined with the light that can go in a, in a very uh, intense experience. But yeah, absolutely. Or, 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 or some people really like to listen to, to just certain sounds, or um, don't know. They feel comfortable when they hear someone doing something, or um, it's just that that thing. At the end of the day, you just have to listen to the thing that makes you feel comfortable, and be a little bit um, brave and venture out, and maybe just use sounds and music you normally wouldn't listen to, just to bring it out of that, a little bit out of that comfort zone occasion, just to allow yourself to experience something different. Yeah, and sound is such a powerful uh, thing. It's a vibration, a mechanical vibration, and that can be, as you said, transmitted through the air, and you can feel it, not, not only hear it. And... Um, by feeling it, you experience it in such a unique and different way. Uh, you mentioned me once about your uh, vibra pad that you made by yourself for yourself. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a platform, yeah. and it has um, um, bass resonators inside, so bass resonators. So it's not an actual speaker as we know it. It's basically just yeah, the driving a driving part of the speaker, speaker. and the, 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 the thing the box or the, 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 yeah, the thing you attach the, the resonator to becomes kind of the speaker. And um, I, I build a platform with these um, speaker resonators inside. So when you lie on them, you really feel all the bass notes of the music. These things are also used for game simulators that when you drive around um, with your car, you actually feel the bumps and jumps your car make. Or it's also used, for example, in home cinemas that you have that um, haptic feedback of, of the music when an explosion is going on. And um, I found it such a an, 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 an relaxing thing for my, for my light practice, just laying on that platform and feeling the sound and, um, and having that additional dimension with sound without having to listen to loud music. So it doesn't have to be loud to be felt. So when you have, uh, when I stand next to that platform, you, you barely can't, can hear it at all. It's just suspended on, on foam and just the, 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 the vibrations are going on and you just feel it when you're actually going on. I think I sent you a, a video uh, a couple months back with the platform on the ground, it looks completely normal, nothing suspicious. And as soon I placed the water bowl onto onto the um, onto the platform, you could see all these vibrations and waves within the water. So it's a it's a, it's a very powerful tool, and um, it's very low cost to make. So everyone interested in in that thing, you more or less need a, um, a solid wood board for wooden um for um, big rubber pads as, as 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 feet and these resonators these resonators start with about 30 odd pounds on amazon so if you really want to make a low cost system a vibro acoustic system you 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 are in the game for less than 100 pounds um, if you're really interested in in that field the more you spend for your resonators, the better they get, of course, with um, representing the different frequencies. But as a, as a, just a, an experience, you can come away with quite cheap resonators, I think. But, but yeah, I, I, I love that additional dimension in my life practice where you just really feel the sound. And it, it almost 
goes back to uh, um, say the, the, the shamanic drumming. So the, the, these big drums, uh, where you really feel that dum 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 dum. Yeah. And these deep vibrations, yeah. they have they have such a a, a, a calming impact on, on onto the body. It's, yeah, not, it's so, funny enough, these patterns, they usually are in sync with our own heartbeat or with our own um, breathing rhythm. And I think these sensations with the sound vibrations, they, they, they bring us back to these sensation, how it feels to breathe or how it feels to, to feel the own heartbeat, with these vibrations we have in our own body. And if you lie on a vibroacoustic platform, these vibrations kind of mimic the exact same thing and make you aware of, of the of your own body uh, vibrations. I think that's a that that I think that's a, at the end of the, the effect of it. And I'm, I'm not an expert in vibroacoustic platforms at all. I just built them for myself because I I, I really liked or I like to experiment with it a little bit further. Yeah. yeah, and I really, uh, I think you should encourage anyone to try it out because it's rather, it's quite safe. It's yeah, it's incredible safe. It's um, and it's it's and it's such a, a a simple way to have really that altered state of consciousness, a full body altered state of consciousness. Uh, I think with the light alone, you get really really far. But if you if you add things like that, where you just get that bodily feedback going, so so people who are hardly a bit stuck in their mind, maybe stuck in their head, then can really accelerate their experience into a complete different di direction if they use things like that, but like a um, yeah, just sounds, yeah. vibrations to actually get that body feedback going as well. Yeah, touch, smell. A side, right? So everything contributes to your experience, even though uh, it doesn't need to be um, in the to to to, to be stacked or to be uh, used in the same time. You can use it before or after. It's going to add to your experience and it's going to help you even more. Yeah. It, it creates such a, a synergetic effect, I think, and. It's very important after we mention all of these to know how we can bring home, how, how we can really integrate our, our experience. And yeah. I want to. That's a really touch. good point. Yeah. yeah. I think that's, a, that's a, something very important because it's, it's, for example, if you go for a half an hour light experience journey, and after that half an hour, you um, kind of need something to reflect what you've seen and what you experienced. So one part is that the capturing as much as possible of your experience in that moment. I personally found it quite easy to forget what you actually experienced and seen. So as soon as the light goes off, I already feel how all these sensations are just flying away. And it's so easy to just jump back into everyday habits and jump back into social media and jump back into, into go in contact and don't know, answer a, a message you received during your experience. But I think it's really important that when you have the experience, you allow yourself the time, first of all, to come back in a really calm way. And second, really use the time to reflect and think about what you've seen. And, um, in order to not lose the, 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 the information, I would suggest to anyone maybe starting up or even if you're in advanced point, just record yourself during the light experience and just say what you see. Oh, I see, I don't know, it's a tunnel like, or now it's purple. It doesn't matter if it's a beautiful language or if you explain it beautiful, just say whatever comes to your mind. And um, as you do so, you, 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 you kind of, first of all, you, 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 you amplify the, the experience because you make kind of that, that loop in your mind where you say what you see. And then when you say it, you see it even more. So you can fall into that experience even deeper. 
but it's also a kind of a manifestation of what you actually experience. And if you listen to these recordings after the light experience, you can kind of recall the different um, visions you had, and you don't lose that information and it's it's information you can use for the integration part after the light experience another way to do it is um on the on the events i usually offer people just a pen and paper so when they come out of the experience allow them five minutes maybe uh, ten minutes to just come back and after these five ten minutes i start talking to people that just move your fingers move your hands just just get comfortably good going again, but come back in your body. But then I invite people to just draw things down or write things down. And that's something I really learned from, from Tree Carr with working her on the events. And she has really a great way to introduce these art, um, the, the, the art integration into the, into the experience. Um, I, I still have a lot to learn, um, but, I think it's a great tool and it's something I really take with me and it's always in my event materials. So everyone coming to the um, um, library event always has a, a bit, little bit of paper and a set of um, colored pencils um, laying next to them so they can really draw. And it's not about making a beautiful art piece, it's really about just bringing thoughts onto paper. It can be simple words, it can be simple shapes, um, just to manifest that, that the experience you just had and allow you to to reflect on the experience or oh, this is what you yeah, exactly. usually do on integration after the, the, the light experience yeah i would imagine it also helps with your mind and body connection it also helps you to express yourself in such a way you haven't been able to recently i mean we all used to draw when we were kids, and we all know the importance of uh, um, staying young at heart, yeah. you know? But we never, we never play anymore. So once you get into that playful mind, mind space, you can take advantage of that and really um, reconnect with yourself and with your older self, right? With your younger self. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Uh, come back to, 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 to the taste after the light experience. Also eating maybe ice cream or um, a certain type of sweets of chocolate who um, kind of nature's the, 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 the nourishes your, your, your inner child and that uh, freshly born being after an experience can be really beneficial. And it's at the end, it's all about what makes you feel good. And if 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 a, um, a little scoop of ice cream gets your emotions going and into a positive direction going, I think that's a great tool. And I, I think so, sometimes you, you can overcomplicate things, and it's always about. Um, very very emotional things sometimes but it's, it's, sometimes it's just something very simple and sometimes you just need a simple light experience with a simple integration but even if it's just a simple light session you do during the week without a lot of um, personal work can be implemented into that into the holistic practice with just yeah positive things and give nurture yourself and your you, 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 you inner child as well. Exactly. And these, these things are not, are not stuff that you need or you should use only once. And it's not something that you, you tried it once, you saw how it is, it cured you for life and that's it. I, for me, I think these are practices that I need to um, come back to weekly, uh, yeah. if not at least monthly, because otherwise I find myself slipping right back uh, into that old mindset that uh, it's not really uh, that good for me. I know I can do a lot more and a lot better, and I use all these types of practices to reconnect myself with my higher potential. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. 
absolutely yeah so we have i think that kind of it uh, because uh, yeah, when okay. we talk about yeah sorry yeah i think we we had all the senses um we also spoke about integration um nothing in really high detail but we just went through the different parts and um i think we could summarize the the, the whole thing with it's important that you are in an environment you feel comfortable with if that is outside or inside that you just make yourself comfortable in your space with lights with um the, with the smells um with the with, with um prepare yourself with the correct food and be well hydrated and all that 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 contributes to the light experience and to the whole journey um and 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 just consume things you think benefits the the experience and not alter it in a, in a way where you can't handle it anymore so, so there are very subtle plants out there and teas out there you can um, you can aid your light experience and um i highly recommend just capturing the the the, the light experience in a way so that you when you do your integration session that you can go back um to that captured information and draw from it and have use from it so that's not just something you give yourself and forget forgive yourself and forget it's something you always can go back to and kind of learn and have personal growth with the with the practice you do if but that yeah, applies also, to anything also, it applies to lucid dreaming that applies to breath work that applies to anything that when you when you when you just keep a journal or just record yourself that you can kind yeah. of work with with all these things I, i think it's very important to do that so you can um yeah keep a record of it so you don't forget it you don't forget where you've been what you've experienced and you can also share it with others and that way you are also having fun um talking about it but um i think it's also very important to reflect upon it so in that sense you integrate and you activate the true potential of uh, that session or in and yeah you use it in your everyday life so of course uh, what uh, i might add here in the end is it might need take a little bit of patience and perseverance like i talked in the first episode as well but i think it, all of it it's way worth it i yeah. really do i want to add something to the end and um that's this weekend um we're going to have an event in manchester with the psychedelic community so there are still some tickets left for a saturday and also for sunday sessions um and the next big one will be um the limnal land retreat in wales with um three car and um brian morrison um there is a uh, different offerings in the beautiful land with breath work and um dreaming sessions and there will be a, a cook there who really cooks delicious meal um it everything happens in a, in a beautiful um natural space you're surrounded from nature and the river and if you're really looking for a um um a break in your in your busy life and um going on a really beautiful um spiritual holiday so to speak i think um the liminal land victory could be a, a a great opportunity and uh, um as i said on that this weekend is um the one in manchester if you're just interested in trying the live light and um seeing if if that is something for you if you want to meet people like minded people uh and want to talk and um uh, discuss and ask questions about it that's that's it that's a uh, the, the perfect place to do that um yeah other than that um if you're interested in the delight device itself you can always can go to um lightbath.co.uk so you find um, all the equipment and lights um on the website and if you're interested more um in 
um, if, for example, the red light therapy or the air purifiers and stuff, you can go onto Gabriel's website, um, infinite1.ro. Um, so, yeah, that's that's about it. Um, I think it was a really nice uh, podcast episode. It just brought everything a little bit together. Um, if you have any questions regarding um, a particular topic, um, just ask in the in the comment section, and we um, might revisit that in the, in the next episode. And um, if you have any other questions regarding the lights and so on, you always can contact me um, on Instagram or over the website. Yeah, I think that's it for today. Um, do you have anything to add, Gabriel? Yes, I would add uh, that um, in the yeah, you should live a conscious life. That, that's that's, <laughs> so, that's yeah. always good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go now because I want to have fun. It's Friday night, right? It's Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right. Talk Thank about you very much. Uh, sound and light and <laughs> having fun. Huh? Having fun tonight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I really, yeah. Am. I really am going to. Not not telling what and how, but <laughs> you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Gabriel. And uh, Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Thank you everyone for listening. And I wish everyone a beautiful evening and a nice weekend. Bye-bye.